Well, the gross uncle is a name that I created for my artwork, sort of like a, uh, a way to express my art style. And I came up with that, I want to say maybe 2006. Um, I was just sketching names in a sketchbook and I wanted an alias for my work, uh, mostly because I didn't think people could pronounce my last name or spell it right. Telemarketers would call our house and stuff and be like, hello, is Mr. Giuliano there? Is Mr. Gilliard there? And I just thought, well, this is going to be a problem going forward, so I should come up with a nickname for my work. And I, I wrote The Gross Uncle amongst many others, and that one made me laugh. And finally, I just settled on that and uh, been stuck with it ever since. The first thing I started with was this really rough sketch. And here's the big tall part of the building that the mural's on. This uh, character right here is Tom's giant. And then I knew that he was going to be peeking over a hill. There's going to be a garden here that Daniel was going to do. Tom and Adam were going to have some uh, clouds and stuff up here. So I thought I could put some animals on the hill. And the more we all talked and brainstormed, we thought, okay, it could be a farm. And then uh, I ended up doing a more developed sketch of the hill, still not really knowing where the actual line of the hill was going to be. Um, just sort of winged that part, but I knew, well, this is roughly the dimension of the building and then just focus on the characters, you know, get those down. So I did that and showed it to Adam. He said it looked pretty good. And then I would take the sketch and have it with me. Eventually I had a little printout with me and I just fold it up in my pocket and then I would come up to the building and I would look here and I think the first thing I did was that chicken because I wanted to, you know, I was intimidated by this whole thing. So I just started small. And then once I did that, I kind of got a better idea for the size of everything. And then uh, just started doing one at a time on the wall in black. And uh, at the time the wall was baby blue. The whole building was spray painted, not spray painted, power sprayed or whatever you call it, blue. I think Adam did it in like one day and outlined everything. And then we got the green. And then, so I just traced around the animals in some green and then rolled it with a small roller, did all the green. Had some help doing that too. Isaac uh, helped me with some of the green. He also helped me with some of the, the little, uh, not little, but like the bigger, like more uh, graphic, large fills, stuff like that. Uh, help things go a little quicker. And uh, that was super helpful. And then uh, just started filling in colors. So I think maybe I did that one the first, that was the first one I did. And I gave Adam a, uh, an email him a bunch of uh, like swatches of color. I made a, a document with swatches of color and then he went to Lowe's and got them mixed up and he came back with this green and we were just like, whoa, oh my God. It was so bright and we were excited. So. And just one by one started filling them in like a coloring book. And then I had to come back in and redo some of the lines because I was painting over them essentially by filling in the big colors. So coming back in and perfecting the lines and getting it to look crisper. We had a lift for like, I don't know, maybe the first two weeks of the mural. And uh, we had to finish the stuff up here that we could only do with the lift. And Tom finished his character before anybody finished anything because he had the lift and we had to get that all that stuff done before we had to return it and so I just I made sure that all my characters up top were done the ones that you could only reach on the lift or a crane whatever you want to call it I'm not very technical with that stuff but I know that it's one of those things that you see all the time around here in construction sites you, you turn it on and you, you're in a basket and uh, 
finished all those characters. Like, so everything up top was like of a finished quality. And then I spent the rest of the time just trying to get everything else up to snuff. So that was pretty challenging. But other than that, I mean, just doing my own style is uh, fun. And that was easy. I mean, you know, obviously, as you can probably tell, it's pretty hot out here today. Sun's pretty intense. Whatever temperature it is outside, you know, the black top in the alley adds another five to 10 degrees. I don't even know, but you really feel it. And uh, so that was like another challenge, just staying hydrated and staying cool, taking breaks, um, sunscreen, stuff like that. Pretty important, pretty obvious, but also, you know, you can lose track of time when you're out here because you just want it to be good and you want it to, I mean, for me, I wanted it to be done as quick as possible because I thought I would take forever and I kind of did, but uh, I would just come out here and do stuff in two or three hour little spurts. And uh, you know, some people that did this mural are just insanely fast and professional. And I was trying to make sure I could uh, be on par with what they were doing. So really awesome, really awesome to be part of it. And definitely excited to have this out here and pretty sweet space, man, pretty excited. Um, so for me, I felt really kind of like without a path once I graduated from art school. And I accidentally joined a studio that was Junction View. Not accidentally, but it wasn't, it, I didn't seek it out directly. And joining that studio really like revealed to me that I'm not a self starter at all. I'm really community driven and having a studio space with a lot of like varied talents and different people who like are there at different times was like hugely motivating for me um so you know there was junction view and then i moved to taco cat and then block fort and largely traveling with like the same group of people and for me i think i'll always have a studio space outside of my house because being able to have a working space right down the hall from like 10, 20, 30 different hyper-talented artists that have some similarities to me, but are also wildly different and work in different mediums and have different schedules has been like very, very artistically motivating. And I feel like we, we draw a lot from each other and I can learn different things about my art by them doing different things with, with their art. Okay, so this is the second year for Alley Islands. Um, the first year, I was kind of like a late joiner in the project. Um, so I ended up doing a, a couple cat paintings here and there as like a, a way to like interject my art into other people's art that they formatted. And this year, I tried to take a more direct approach to it and did a bigger piece. And it's the biggest mural I've done so far. And it's been an interesting journey trying to make it. I feel like it could only get bigger and better. Like the idea of having a bunch of artists work together to make weird stuff happen. Like we have like so much creative energy that we can pool together and so much time that we can pool together. And I think each year that we do it is another, another phase where we can learn about what we need and want out of the project and build on that. So I think it's just, it's just gonna get more fun. And so like working with other women who are definitely badasses and seeing them try harder and do more and just like push themselves so far has been like, it, it's been really inspiring to watch that.
So my name's Adam Brulette. I'm an artist. Uh, grew up in the Chicago area, ended up going to high school in the Cleveland area, and moved to Columbus to go to college at Columbus College of Art and Design. Graduated in 2002. Been a working artist since. Um, primarily a painter, uh, though I was trained in printmaking. Um, painting has changed scales several times, uh, going from small scale painting to large scale painting, and uh, more recently doing a lot of mural stuff. Um, over the course of after I graduated, uh, I was part of many projects, uh, namely uh, Juncture View Studios, which ran for about nine years, was a 22,000 square foot warehouse with about 80 artists working in it uh, at a time when the uh, Columbus landscape for artists was kind of changing and shifting. Um, and a lot of the artists were displaced from the short north and were looking for a new place to go. We sort of served as a lifeboat, I like to think. And then in 2016, my wife and I uh, decided to find this place um, and move downtown and start Block Fort. Um, there were uh, uh, initially a dozen artists that we had at uh, Taco Cat and those artists came with us and then we added another group. We now have uh, 30 working artists in the building. We opened to the public in early 2017 and by spring of 2017 we decided that we had this big gray building. We might as well paint some stuff on it and make it look nice. Um, so the initial project was actually just we wanted to make some seats and add some color outside. We made a big stack of bricks to make some mountains and painted a rainbow. Uh, and that was sort of the start of what Alley Islands became. Uh, Alley Islands from that ended up being a partnership between myself and um, Jess Matthews, who has many roles and does many things, but is an advocate for turning streets into people places. Um, and she uh, is partnered with uh, Transit Columbus is a right-of-way access um, advocacy group. Um, they advocate for public transit and biking and, and public spaces to be used for pedestrian use. Um, those uh, transit, Jess Matthews and I kind of sat down and talked a little bit and said, how could we take the alleyways around Block Fort and turn them into something a little bit more vibrant? Um, I ended up taking the role as the like art coordinator and put together the first year, I think we had uh, this idea that we were going to do a, a series of small events. Each event was gonna have a new muralist painting and each one would have a different theme. Um, we kind of dubbed that Alley Islands, this idea of you're like island hopping. And you go from one island to the next, each one has its own vibe and its own feel. And uh, we had two events that year, one called Play Island and another called Zen Island. Um, Play Island, I ended up doing uh, more muraling with the mountain and uh, added my characters into it. Uh, the Zen Island, uh, artist named Natalia Sanchez from Puerto Rico um, came and she painted uh, sort of a portal with some fish and then we had yoga and um, like hammocks with books to read and uh, that kind of stuff during the uh, island event. Um, that kind of expanded. A bunch of artists started approaching and saying, hey, I'd love to do this. And then we decided, why don't we just make it one big thing? So in 2018, um, we had, uh, I think it was over two weekends, we um, got all the artists together. And I think there were 14 people that came, painted murals, covered the whole wall. And then uh, in June of 2018, we had uh, Alley Islands as one big event where we shut down the roads, uh, had two stages, 14 bands, um, a dozen vendors, uh, food trucks, and uh, had like a little mini festival. Um, during my time in Columbus, I've run a bunch of festivals and events, so I, I kind of wanted to show that we could do a, you know, it's fun downtown event, get a couple hundred people here and turn this space that, according to the city, when we moved into the building was, uh, even though statistically it was not the most violent area, uh, the public in surveys that had been done of the downtown area, people viewed this as the most violent and uh, crime-ridden area of downtown. Uh, moving in here, I can say for certainty that it is not a crime-ridden, violent area, um, but the public perception was that. 
and so it allowed us to come in and uh, work with our, our business neighbors, Roosevelt Coffee, Brioso, the Hills Market, uh, Pat and Gracie's, uh, and just kind of find ways to, you know, make this area pleasant and for people want to come over here. I'd say there's a, a lot of support. Um, the biggest supporters are probably the, the artists themselves, um, willing to come out here, work, it's hot, it's, you know, it's not like this is a high paying gig or something. People are just coming out because they love painting and they want to work together. Uh, and that takes, a, you know, a lot of guts for an artist to say, hey, I want to do this thing that's bigger than just me. Um, we had support from, uh, like I said, partnership with Just Matthews and Transit Columbus. They uh, became a fiscal sponsor, so when we started writing grants, uh, they, they served as a fiscal agent for that. Um, the grants came from the Discovery District CID, um, Special Improvement District. Uh, they, they and Cleve Rick Secker, their executive uh, director, and um, some of their team members uh, have really been very supportive of the project. Uh, the Greater Columbus Arts Council provided us a grant to help uh, purchase materials and um, pay artists small stipends. Um, so that was a huge help. Uh, I had a lot of assistance from the Independence Day Festival team. Uh, I ran a festival for a long time um, and the team that put that festival together when it came time to uh, make pop-up events happen here, they did a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of things to support. Um, and then the public, uh, having people every day come out. Um, you know, I, I'm amazed every morning I wake up and somebody's out here shooting selfies by the wall, photographers coming out and shooting, you know, band photos and stuff. And uh, when you have something that becomes a destination where people want to come and shoot photos, it shows the, uh, the value that art has um, in the community. And, uh, you know, the more people I see out here, the more it makes us want to do more. Uh, I'm a big fan of Lockport. I'm a big fan of what they do. I have a lot of friends that are uh, artists here. Um, I've known Adam for a very long time and uh, I've always been interested in how he <clears throat> brings art to the community and um, the creative ways in which he, you know, allows people to get exposed to this kind of work. Okay. Uh, so can you tell us about your favorite part of the mural? Um, it's hard for me to pick one artist. Uh, I do love Daniel Rona's work. I have a couple of his pieces in my own collection. Um, my favorite thing about this mural is the way that the artists transition into each other, the playfulness of it, trying to figure out where one artist starts and one artist ends, um, and then how they sort of, you think you've got to figure it out, and then all of a sudden there's a character from another artist 20 feet down from where the mural, their mural ends. So. Um, I just love the seamlessness of it.